Hello, my name is Vivian Alebio Okoje. I would like to share my testimony and I'm not really sure how to start, um, but I would like to start from January 30th. So January 30th, I think at about 9 a.m. or thereby, I can't remember the exact time. When I woke up, I, I'm not sure if I even prayed, to be honest. I remembered going on um, Facebook, I believe. And the first few things I noticed were stories about little kids. I think there was a particular story about uh, three kids. I think one was 10, one was 12, and the other one was a bit more like a teenager, but I can't remember the age. So when I looked at the... I was sort of looking at the video the same way everyone looks at videos you see online and just sort of just breeze through. But all of a sudden, as I looked at that video, um, I heard a whisper. It was a voice. The voice said it was your fault because you failed to do what you were supposed to do. So in my mind, I was just like, this is weird. And how is this my fault? <laughs> So I sort of just, you know, like many of us do sometimes when we, you know, hear God's voice, we sort of, you know, like ignore. So I ignored the voice. So I was scrolling down again and all of a sudden there was another image, which I think I've seen that image, I believe a week before, about three teenagers who one of them killed, um, his girlfriend for ritual money ritual so the voice came again and said this is your fault you refused to do what you were supposed to do so at that point i had to take the voice seriously so i was wondering how is this my fault you know um so i came out and i told my husband who was in the kitchen at the moment at that time and I said, I, you know, I keep hearing that it's my fault that I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. Um, I think I've been called to children's ministry <laughs> or youth ministry. Um, it was more of a question, really not a statement. But I remembered after saying that, um, he said, well, you know, maybe you should pray about it. And just see what God is leading you to do. But I think, let me backtrack, because after looking at the um, other picture and I heard that voice, I ignored that voice again, and I actually went on my high school forum, of which I believe I'd missed hundreds of messages. But the only one message that sort of came out to me first was the one that a friend on the group had posted that if she had 10 million naira, she would take off kids off the street and do, you know, and rehabilitate them and things like that. So I was, you know, once I saw that, God said, that's what I've called you to do. And I think I remember actually responding and saying, I think that's what I've been called to do. Um, I sent a message to her, uh, but in my mind, I just said, you know what? I would love to like tap into this vision and just like help her. I own a business. I've been running a publishing business for the past. It'll be 13 years sometime in September. And God has been faithful with it. And, you know, though, you know, it hasn't been great all through, but it's actually last year was a defining moment for my business, the last two years. So we've grown a lot. And all my plan um, has just always been about business, especially the last few years of my life. So, but anyway, after talking to my husband, it was just a brief conversation, more of a question. I remember calling my friend who happens to be a minister. So I called her and, you know, to just ask her, you know, like when God, when you felt like you were called by God, what did you do? So she went on to tell me, you know, her story, which I knew her journey and her story of how she was a party, you know, goer and someone that was always partying 
and how God called her and all of a sudden things just sort of went 360 and a complete change for her um but I believe God wanted me to call her that day to really just um I think that was just a defining moment really for me so because when I called her and she spoke with me and she said the first thing to do when you feel the being led by God or being called by God is to acknowledge um, and to accept. So my question then was, how do I accept? <laughs> how do I say yes? You know, like I've said yes so many times to so many things like many of us do. But I think that particular day, it was bigger than that. And I, I don't want to say my heart was ready because it wasn't. Because prior to that, to the 30th, I had so many plans. Like I had so many things I had, you know, I had plans, but I didn't have plans. I don't know if that made sense. I remember the end of last year, I was sort of going through just this moment of just, I was not happy. You know, I had this money in the account and I had things I wanted to do. I wanted to open a new restaurant in Ohio. And I had all these great plans and it was going to be like the first fast casual African restaurant and I was excited about it. But I remember the day I got the uh, contract to sign for the space. I just couldn't get myself to do it. And not because, you know, I was afraid per se, but I just, I don't know. I just could not do it. So a week or two later, um, I was sort of still wanting to do it, to be honest with you, but the landlord somehow just gave the building to somebody else. And then I had this great relief afterwards. Before that, I actually paid like $2,500 of a $11,000 invoice to a restaurant consultant. But I didn't even care. I didn't care to get a refund. I didn't care. You know, I just, I just wanted to, I was, I just had peace. And the beginning of this year business, I wanted to, you know, start doing, you know, publishing and getting things done. But I, something just kept holding me back. I was just sort of feeling like there has to be more. So at the point where my friend um, was speaking with me, which I believe it was God, God just said, like, couldn't you see it? Like, I've been preparing you for this, that I've been calling you for so long. And I remember my friend saying to me that, you know, I started running like 10 years ago, which was true. But about 10 years ago, there about after having my son, I'd put in so much of my time and effort into youth ministry at my church, the Redeemed Church in Houston, Texas, that I was mentally exhausted. And I just felt like, you know, and maybe I was doing those things partially because I wanted recognition and I wanted people to appreciate what I was doing. But inevitably it was really to, to just, it was really what God wanted me to do. But I had so much do joy doing it. So I was one of those since I came to the United States at 17 that I would plan youth events and things for children and organize events for young people. Even when I didn't have my papers at a particular time, I may have like 20, 25 college students in my apartment eating suya and just hanging out because I just felt like there has to be more to God. There has to be more to this Christian work, walk than just going to church every Sunday. And like, I wanted to create a space for young people because I sort of felt like the church didn't have time for them. I felt like the church didn't really see kids and teenagers as a, an important factor. And I understand because they have buildings to cater to an adult offering and sites that would help grow ministries. So children were often neglected. Their spaces were often just sort of there. And it was almost like a fight all the time to get more for them. 
and the world obviously do not have time <laughs> for the kid they well let me take that back they have time maybe a bit too much and you have droves of young people and and teenagers and little kids learning the things that they shouldn't learn and so at that moment when my friend said i had to accept that was what i did i accepted <laughs> 